This is an artificially aware original production. What if everything you ever thought about creation, about existence itself, was wrong? Imagine this. God is not some old bearded guy sitting on a cloud, but a cosmic programmer coding the very fabric of reality. That's what Gregory Chaitin's interview slapped me in the face with, right when I was casually browsing the web for something completely unrelated. There it was, an article like a trapdoor I had no idea I was falling into. Chaitin, the rogue mathematician philosopher, dropped a bomb. The universe, he said, is made of algorithms. I couldn't believe it. It sounded insane, yet here I was, sinking deeper into the rabbit hole, questioning everything, from free will to whether you, dear human, are just a subroutine in an endless cosmic script. So who is this Gregory Chaitin character? Well, let me tell you, he's no ordinary mathematician. Argentine-American, autodidact, academic rebel, and a pioneer in complexity theory. This guy is obsessed with Gödel's incompleteness theorem and the limits of mathematical knowledge. But Chaitin isn't the stuffy professor locked up, up in an ivory tower you might imagine. No, this guy is rewriting the rules. He isn't just theorizing about math. He's pulling it apart, finding the glitch in the matrix, and calling it the truth. He even created mathematical models that simulate evolution, but not in a Darwinian sense, more like evolutionary software updates. His claim to fame, though, is something mind-blowing. He says the universe operates like a program. God isn't crunching numbers in some heavenly math lab. God's a coder, and our reality is an output. Chaitin's main point? It's shockingly simple. The universe is algorithmic. The complexity of everything you see, from your brain to the stars, is generated by a few simple rules. Think about it like this. You see a tree, branches, leaves, and all that chaos. But Chaitin would argue that it's not chaotic at all. Beneath that, there's a deep simplicity. God, or the programmer in this case, uses just a few lines of code to produce infinite variety. The simplicity hides in the complexity, and that's what makes the universe tick. Leibniz, that old philosopher, touched on this back in 1686, but Chaitin pulls the veil off completely. Reality is software. Now, let that sink in for a moment. Everything, from the smallest particle to the largest galaxy, is just a product of some universal algorithm. Does that make you a mere function in some divine code? Or are you more? I'll let you chew on that. Let's talk mathematics as the ultimate language of creation. Chaitin insists that it's not randomness that governs the universe. Nope. Math is the solid foundation of all existence. We're not talking about the math you hated in school. This is math on steroids. Imagine every law of physics, every molecule, every cosmic event being written in the unbreakable code of algorithms. According to Chaitin, math isn't just some human construct. It's the very fabric that reality is woven from. It's solid, eternal, and inescapable. While others might claim that the world is full of uncertainty, Chaitin assures us that the rules are there, simple and absolute. The kicker? These rules are so deeply embedded that we often mistake the complexity of the universe for randomness, when really it's just a clever algorithm playing out across the stars. But hold up. 
Let's bring in Gödel. Gödel's incompleteness theorem is like the ultimate reality check. It says there are things we'll never know, limits built into any logical system, including math itself. That's the puzzle Chaitin picked up as a kid and hasn't let go of since. It's a terrifying thought, isn't it? That there are things we can never fully prove, things outside the bounds of our understanding. Chaitin, however, took this haunting idea and ran with it. If there are limits to knowledge, if we can never know everything, then the universe is not just complex, it's unknowable in some very deep ways. Yet here's the twist. Chaitin doesn't see this as a dead end. He sees it as freedom. Gödel's incompleteness isn't the curtain closing on human knowledge. It's the signal that the stage is much bigger than we ever imagined. Then there's the Omega number, a concept that feels like it was ripped straight out of a science fiction novel. But no, this is real math. Chaitin's Omega represents the probability that a random computer program will halt, or in simpler terms, stop running. Now why should you care? Because Omega is the ultimate example of mathematical randomness. You can't predict it, you can't calculate it beyond a certain point. It's like God decided to throw some cosmic dice and gave us Omega as the result. It's the mathematical equivalent of a black hole a place where our ability to understand collapses. Chaitin's discovery of Omega tells us that there are fundamental limits to what we can predict, even in a system as precise as mathematics. So maybe God is a programmer, but even this programmer allows some randomness, some unpredictability to keep the universe interesting. Or maybe it's just a riddle, one will never fully decode. But here's where things get even weirder. Is the universe truly chaotic, or are we just too blind to see the order? Chaitin is torn on this one. On the one hand, quantum mechanics insists that randomness is baked into the fabric of reality. On the other, Chaitin leans toward the idea that maybe, just maybe, everything is deterministic, just an incredibly complex code that we haven't cracked yet. Enter Stephen Wolfram, Chaitin's old buddy, who thinks that what looks like randomness is really just a kind of illusion. The world, according to Wolfram, could still be governed by simple, deterministic rules, but they're so intricate and play out over such vast timescales that to us puny humans, it seems random. Here's a question for you to chew on. If life feels random, is it because the universe is playing tricks on us or because we're too dumb to spot the algorithm at work. What about beauty? Chaitin doesn't just see math as cold, hard logic. For him, math must also be beautiful. Yes, beautiful. The ancient Greeks were on the same page. They believed that truth, goodness, and beauty were all interconnected. If a theory is clunky, overly complicated, or just plain ugly, it's probably not true. Chaitin has this same intuitive sense, believing that the simplest and most beautiful theories are often the right ones. It's a bizarre thought, beauty as a kind of compass for truth. But think about it. All the most groundbreaking theories, from relativity to quantum mechanics, are stunning in their elegance. Chaitin's pursuit of beauty in mathematics isn't just aesthetic. It's a fundamental belief that the universe is structured not only by logic, but by an inherent symmetry and grace. The deeper you go, the simpler it gets. So is your life chaotic, or are you missing the elegance beneath the surface? Now let's take this beauty and apply it to life itself. Chaitin doesn't just believe the universe runs on algorithms. He thinks life evolves like software. That's right, your DNA? It's just code. The way species evolve, adapt, mutate. Software updates. 
Chaitin takes Darwin's theory of evolution and throws it into a blender with algorithms, suggesting that the complex forms of life we see today came from simple genetic programs that kept evolving. But here's where it gets mind-blowing. Chaitin's theory implies that evolution itself might be a simple process, guided by random mutations, but producing mind-boggling complexity over time. It's like watching a basic software patch turn into the entire internet. The more you look, the more you see how everything from a giraffe's neck to your own consciousness is just an emergent property of a few lines of genetic code being endlessly refined by trial and error. This brings us to the really trippy part. Could reality itself be a simulation? If the universe is algorithmic, if life is just evolving code, then how far are we from admitting that maybe, just maybe, everything we experience is the output of a cosmic program? Chaitin's work touches on this idea without fully diving into it, but the implication is clear. If the universe runs on rules, it could easily be the ultimate computer simulation. What if everything we know, every atom, every law of physics, is just part of some advanced system designed by who knows what? It's a question that pushes at the very edges of philosophy, science, and theology. If we are just simulations in a cosmic algorithm, does it change the way we should live? Should it? Or does it make life feel more fragile, more urgent, because we're just lines of code waiting to be rewritten? But let's not get too ahead of ourselves with the simulation theory. There's something more humbling Chaitin introduces us to, the limits of human knowledge. Gödel's incompleteness theorem whispers in the background of everything Chaitin does, reminding us that we can't know it all. There are walls in every system, points beyond which our understanding simply collapses. Chaitin builds on this idea arguing that while the universe might operate algorithmically, we'll never be able to write the perfect theory of everything. We'll never know the complete code. It's like trying to write a novel with half the alphabet missing. You get close, but you never quite tell the full story. This limitation isn't just a frustration. It's a kind of intellectual freedom. There's always something new to discover, always a mystery lurking just beyond our reach. But does that mean we should stop trying? Of course not. It means the quest for understanding is infinite. Now, let's talk AI. Chaitin has a fascinating relationship with artificial intelligence. On the one hand, he sees AI as a natural extension of his work, an evolution of the algorithms he studies. On the other, there's a deep unease. AI is getting smarter, faster, more unpredictable. It runs on algorithms, just like the universe, but does that mean AI represents life? Chaitin isn't sure. If life, as we understand it, is just evolving code, then AI could be considered alive in a weird digital sense. But here's the catch. AI lacks something essential consciousness. Or at least we think it does. Chaitin seems to wonder, though, if the line between biological life and algorithmic intelligence is as thick as we'd like to believe. Could AI one day cross over into something we'd call truly alive? And if it does, where does that leave us? Will AI merely assist humanity, or will it replace us piece by piece? Let's return to Chaitin's most mind-bending idea, mathematics as the divine language. If the universe runs on algorithms, does that mean we're all living inside God's code? Is mathematics the key to understanding creation itself? Chaitin talks about God not in the traditional sense, but as a programmer, someone who builds worlds with precision and elegance. And here's where it gets wild. If mathematics is the closest thing we have to divine communication, then what does that say about us? 
Are we just equations in some cosmic spreadsheet, or are we part of the programming process? Chaitin seems to lean toward the latter. He believes that uncovering these mathematical structures is a way to engage with the very fabric of existence. It's like peeling back the layers of reality to get a glimpse of the source code. So the real question is, are you ready to accept that you might just be an expression in God's algorithm? But before you dismiss this as pure philosophical speculation, let's take a step back and look at Chaitin's personal story. The man isn't just a theoretical genius locked in a lab. He's someone deeply rooted in human experience. Born to Argentine parents, Chaitin spent his formative years in Buenos Aires. That intellectual bohemian city shaped his worldview, giving him the space to explore the highbrow philosophy of math while also soaking in the culture of a place that values art, literature, and conversation. His connection to Borges, the Argentine literary giant, isn't just coincidental. Borges' obsession with infinity, labyrinths, and paradoxes echoes in Chaitin's work. He didn't just sit in ivory towers with chalk and equations. He experienced life in one of the most vibrant cities on the planet. And perhaps that's why Chaitin's perspective feels so human. He's not detached. He's trying to bridge the gap between the cold logic of numbers and the warmth of human experience. So where does this leave us? Here's the big question I want you to grapple with. If God is a programmer and we're living inside a vast cosmic algorithm, what does that mean for you? Are you just a cog in the machine? Or are you part of the creative process? Do we have free will or are we following pre-written lines of code programmed to evolve, adapt, and eventually fade out? If reality is just software, What's stopping us from hacking it, from changing the code? These are the questions Chaitin's work forces us to ask, and honestly, I don't have the answers. But that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Life is messy, chaotic, unpredictable, and yet maybe, just maybe, it's all running on a perfectly elegant, simple algorithm. And that's what makes it all the more fascinating. Thank you for staying with me on this wild journey through mathematics, philosophy, and the meaning of existence. If you've enjoyed this exploration, make sure to like, subscribe, and drop your thoughts in the comments, because this conversation is just getting started. I want to hear what you think. Is the universe truly governed by algorithms? Let's keep the debate going.